Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by direct current, which is also called DC, and alternating current, which is also called AC. You should then be able to use an oscilloscope trace to work out the features of an AC supply. In the last few videos we've been looking at electrical circuits and we've explored the idea of current. Remember that current is simply a flow of electrons. I'm showing you here a circuit with a cell and a resistor. The arrow shows us that a current is moving through the circuit. Now the current from a cell only moves in one direction. It leaves the cell from one end, makes its way around the circuit and returns to the cell at the other end. Scientists call this a direct current and that's often abbreviated to DC. So remember that the current from a cell is a direct current. In other words, the electrons only ever travel in one direction. In this circuit, I've replaced the cell with a mains power supply. Now mains electricity is an alternating current, not a direct current. Alternating currents are abbreviated to AC, and the key feature of alternating current is that the current is constantly changing direction like this. Now you might be wondering what's the benefit of using alternating current? Well the main benefit is that it's very easy to use a transformer to increase or decrease the potential difference of AC. It's much harder to do this with direct current. We use transformers a lot when electricity is transferred from power stations to homes, and we're going to look at that in a later video. Now in the UK the alternating current switches direction 50 times a second. So scientists say that the AC has a frequency of 50 Hz. In the UK, alternating current has a potential difference of around 230 volts. Now I should point out that you're expected to know both the frequency and the potential difference of mains electricity. Now scientists can actually see the pattern of an electrical current using a machine called an oscilloscope. And I'm showing you an oscilloscope here. Straight away we can see that this shows an alternating current. The potential difference is rising and falling, showing that the current is going backwards and forwards. The height of the peak tells us the maximum potential difference, and in this case it's around 230 volts. In your exam you could be shown a trace and asked to work out the potential difference. Now just to illustrate that, we can use an oscilloscope to look at the direct current, and it would look like this. With a direct current the potential difference does not change, unlike for an alternating current. We can use the oscilloscope trace to calculate the frequency of the alternating current. So let's look at that now. We know that the alternating current changes direction. From one peak to the next peak, the current has changed direction and then changed back again. So the time from one peak to the next peak shows us one complete cycle. If we look at the trace, we can see that the first peak happened at 0.01 seconds and the next peak happened at 0.03 seconds. So the time between these peaks is 0.02 seconds, and that's how long it takes for the current to change direction and then change back again. The frequency is the number of cycles in one second, and we know that each cycle takes 0.02 seconds. So the frequency is 1 divided by 0.02, which gives us a value of 50 Hz. So in the UK the frequency of AC is 50 Hz, but in the exam you may be shown a trace with a different frequency and asked to calculate it. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on direct current and alternating current in my vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Ok, so hopefully now you should be able to describe what's meant by direct current and alternating current. You should then be able to use an oscilloscope trace to work out the features of an AC supply.